Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are live. Make sure you hit that like button for me. Hit that subscribe button. I definitely appreciate y'all being here. Independent Many United. Thank you so much for sharing out the stream. I appreciate you. Before we get started with this party, make sure everybody goes over to rebelwithoutareason.com to get all your shirts, hoodies, hats, mugs, and more. All available at rebelwithoutareason.com. Got some new designs over there. I'm going to be putting some new stuff up soon. Go to new stuff here. Bickety Bamo. You got your GI Joe shirts. Get yourself a little Genocide Joe shirt right there for you. Fun for the whole family. Get yourself one of those. If you don't want to have Joe Biden's face on there, you can just have the regular GI Joe. Some of my favorite ones. Also the Sloppy Joe. We got all the Joes for you. Available in white and black. Look at that price there. sixteen ninety four. You can't beat that, man. Everybody wants thirty five ninety nine for a t shirt nowadays. You ain't getting wicked ass designs like this right there. Get yourself a Joe Biden total retard shirt. If you don't like those, we got them in mugs as well. Anything and everything your heart desires at rebelwithoutareason.com. While you're over there, make sure you hit that uh, link to the Rumble channel. That'll take you right over there so you can sh see the show from there. Just in case they try to hide the stream from y'all. You know they are likely to do that sometimes. Now all that's done. Kablamo. What's up, guys and girls? Thank y'all for being here. I definitely appreciate y'all. Feels like forever, ever since I've been on this piece. Last week I got sidetracked hanging out with the grandkids. You know how it goes. Trying to spend that quality time with the families. Hope everybody had a good weekend. Everybody watched the eclipse. Who caught the eclipse out there? Make sure you wore your uh, regulation eyewear. SC Wolverine's in the house. What up, brother? Not advisable to look at the sun like Trump did that day. He was like, ah, fuck that. I'm such a pimp. I don't need no eye protection. Fuck that. I definitely appreciate y'all being here. Make sure you hit that like button for me. Share the stream out. Do all the fun stuff. You can also get this on your uh, favorite podcasting platforms. Apple, iTunes, Spotify, all that fun stuff. It sucked around you. Dude, it was kind of... Uh, really overcast you know what i mean we had a little bit of what you would see as the crescent moon if when the moon is out but that's how much we got still left over and it's still pretty sunny outside it wasn't a total eclipse total eclipse of the heart it wasn't that but i was like man it looks kind of gloomy out here even though it was kind of cloudy and shit all day it kind of rained off and on in our area and uh I kind of pulled over and I had my eyewear from last time, 2017, homeboy. I had that old school uh, total eclipse so, uh, I, eyewear. I hung on to it. I was like, man, where did that shit go? I threw it in a drawer in the kitchen. Went in there, found that beast. I said, you know what? I'm going to take this to work with me. And if I happen to get out there and get a break, I'm going to take a look at it. And I got done with my job and was looking up at it going, hey, this thing's about to start. It was just coming over. They said it lasted a lot longer this time, four minutes, four and a half minutes or so. Last time it was pitch black in, in this mother when we were in Nashville. 
this time we were kind of on the outer horizon, outer edges of it, you know. Yeah, yeah. By the way, make sure you go over here and get you one of them popping ass college shirts. That Trump 2024 Make America Great Again shirt. Got that on the website too. I forgot to tell you that. Get you one of them there. Yeah, not everybody was in the uh, path of the eclipse, but people were getting off work and they were expecting some kind of mass casualty. Did you see all that? Planning for two or three years ahead of time. Like, dude, what are y'all doing, man? It's just a little bit of darkness. Yo, Krabby's in the house. What up, Krabby? Good to see y'all. Feels like forever and a day ago. All right, let's go get into some madness here before we really get started with the uh, the news news. This uh, this young lady here says that her daughter got a text message from one of the teachers, 54-year-old male teacher, giving the cell phone to four sixth graders. Do y'all think that's weird? Let's go ahead and watch this shit. Imagine a 54-year-old man giving their cell phone number to your sixth grade child. Mm -hmm. So being a 54-year-old male teacher, giving your cell phone number to four Six graders total. Mm hmm. So they can call you anytime they need. Meanwhile, you are sending good morning texts, good night texts, how was your day text, sending songs that remind you of them. Mm hmm. To me, this is very inappropriate. Very inappropriate. No school teacher, male or female, should be giving a student their number. Period. It's very unprofessional. I think it's very tacky. I think it's enticing a minor, in my personal opinion. That is my opinion. But how about if this was your child and you found out? Not because your child told you. You were going through your child's phone and you found the messages and you confronted the child because the child, the child is so innocent to a degree that they put the teacher's name in the phone, Mr. So and So. Child has never sent one inappropriate message, but has received dozens, and I mean dozens, of inappropriate messages. You report it to the school, and the school in turn pulls all four girls in, well, pulls several, several girls in, finds out four girls particularly have the number, nobody else, just four girls. Those four girls all admit to being treated so much differently than the rest of the students. But here's, here's the, the plot twist. The teacher is being called a victim in this. Unbelievable. And the four students are, be call, are, be, are call, four students are being called suspects in the whole situation. Wow. The kids are being called suspects. And the 54-year-old man that has given his cell phone number to sixth graders the hell has he got to talk about sixth graders for? SC Wolverine said, I'm after their mommies. I hear you on that. I love hot moms. Hot moms is where it's at. Yeah, definitely, uh, Krabby. Fire up the wood chippers on this motherfucker here. Let's keep going. The teacher cannot be charged with anything because he's done nothing wrong but give his cell phone number out. Even though I think for a 54-year-old man to be texting a child that he's not related to, how is your morning, beautiful? Sweet dreams, beautiful. Hell this no. song reminds me of you, beautiful. Body like a back road is not a song you should send to a child. Body like a back road? Anybody know what, this, what song she's referring to? I'm not in on the, the kid's new... Uh, R&B hits, Body Like a Back Road. That sounds like some country R&B, possibly. That might be raunchy. How the hell are you going to text a child and say, Good morning, beautiful. How was your day, beautiful? I'm speaking to the fathers out there. What would y'all do? 
Ain't no damn way. Mm-hmm. You are made for me is not a song to be sent to a child. <laughs> and that's what we said in Patty Cake Baker's Man or Loop de Loo, my darling. I don't think you should be sending a child any damn thing. I'm just confused how the sheriff's department thinks this is children are suspects and this teacher is a victim. What the actual furk? Let me know your opinion. I'm with her. What the actual fuck? What in the Sam Hill? Oh, it's by Sam Hunt. No fucking way. I was just about to look it up. Let me jump over here to the boob tube right quick. Body like a back road. Get the fuck out of here. Sam Cunt. Is that the same Sam Hunt? Is that the same guy? The That's not the same dude that was... Uh, doing the lingerie shit on MTV or whatever, the awards. What's that guy's name? Is that Sam Hunt? We can't play it over here, but maybe we'll play it on the Rummer channel. Let's see. I'll mute that bitch and we'll read the lyrics. Yeah, it's country as hell. Got a girl from the south side. Let me put this up here. First time I seen her walk by, man, I'm about to fill up my chair. What? Had to get her number. It took me like six weeks. Now me and her go way back like Cadillac seats. Body like a back road driving with my eyes closed. I know every curve like the back of my hand. Doing 15 and a 30 ain't in no hurry. I'm going to take it slow just as fast as I can. The way she see, well, hold on. The way she fit in them blue jeans, she don't need no belt. Is this appropriate language for a 54-year-old uh, teacher to send to a child? Please defend this shit. We can turn them inside out and don't need no help. Oh, hell no. Got hips like honey, so thick and so sweet, man. Yeah, he sent that to the kids. Body like a back road. That's what the mom was saying. And... Ain't no curves like hers on them downtown streets. Who wrote this trash? Body like a back road driving with my eyes closed. If you're if you're singing this to your lady, I guess. But not to no child, man. What the this is some lover boy shit here. And again, not saying that Sam Cunt has anything to do with it, but he wrote the song or performs the song. This is the song that was referred to, so no shade on him. Doing 15 and a 30. Ain't in no hurry, you son bitch. I'm gonna take it slow. Get this back to I can. Rinse and repeat, it's all the same. Country songs are so mundane. While they're here in the boondocks with the breeze and the birds. Tangled up in the tall grass with my lips on hers. I don't even know how this song goes, but I'm pretty sure it goes like that. Y'all didn't know I was a country singer. I'm 
on the highway to heaven, headed south for a smile. Mm. Get there when we get there, every inch is a mile. Body like a back road, drive with my eye closed. Sucking on a toe-toe. I know every curve like the back of my hand. What's up, Sonya? Sam Smith. Thank you so much. I had it all fucked up. I knew it was one of them Sams. Do one fifteen in a 30. Ain't in no hurry. I'm going to take it slow just fast as I can. I'm going to take it slow. Just fast as I can. Got braids in her hair because she's 15 years old. What in the hell, dude? I hope y'all enjoyed that rendition of Body Like a Back Road. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you want more tomfoolery. Let me go back here to the Twitter sphere. Because there was a little uh, article on that, attached to that. All right, here's this is from Wall Street Apes, too, by the way. I'm just going to read. Uh, he says, this should make your blood boil. 54-year-old male teacher giving your cell phone number to four sixth graders, sends him text songs and sends them text songs and inappropriate messages. It's reported to the school and the teacher is labeled as the victim and the six kid, six-year-old kids are labeled as suspects. American mother Shasti Lee says, imagine 50, 40 year old man giving the cell phone number to your sixth grade child. So we, we read everything. She, we saw the video that she said. So being a 50, 40 year old male teaching a uh, teacher, giving your cell phone number to four, four, six graders total. So they can call you anytime they need. Meanwhile, you're sending good morning texts. Good night text. How was your day text? Where's the parents on this? Sending songs that remind you of them. So he's saying that song reminded him of of those girls. Inappropriate.com. Uh, Sonia says, anyone who references a song by a man who wears a dress is suspect in more ways than one. I knew his songs before he became the non-binary retard. Yeah, so that was Sam Smith that she's referring to, not the Sam Hunt that just uh, was the singer of that song we just went through a second ago. But that was the song that uh, was sent by the teacher. Like I said, no shade on that guy, but he's using your songs to seduce little children, homeboy. But how would you feel if this was your child and you found out not because your child told you you were going through your child's phone and you found the messages and you confronted the child because the child is so innocent to a degree that they put the teacher's name in the phone, Mr. So-and-so. That was basically all the, everything that she said before. The four students were being called suspects in the whole situation. The teacher could not be charged with anything because he's doing nothing wrong but give his cell phone number out. I think that's wrong enough as it is. Your teacher don't need your cell phone, and they can reach you at the school. Better yet, yeah, you want, I'll, I'll, give, I'll take your cell phone and get right to my daddy. My daddy's going to be calling you straight away. Ain't no way. Let's see if I can think of something else with that. Totally inappropriate for sure. Nothing else associated with that. Hopefully he don't uh, 
Well, more people will come forward and say, hey, man, this dude was totally inappropriate with me. It's not an isolated incident. They said he gave numbers out to seven different kids, but four of them are the ones that got called into the office. Now they're in trouble. Fuck out of here. Don't hear about this. FBI investigation into the uh, satanic church. I'm sorry, the satanic temple in Salem. See if I can make this bigger. That ain't going to work. So I could do this picture in picture. Fudge. Damn. It's gonna look like a damn potato. property causing damage. Boston 25 News reporters are investigating a scare at the Satanic Temple. Investigators say a pipe bomb was thrown onto the porch of the property causing damage. Boston 25 News reporter Ryan Breslin is live from Bridge Street this morning. And Ryan, officers are still looking for the person who's responsible. Good morning to you, Ray. Yeah, that's right. Salem police say that that pipe bomb was discovered almost 12 hours after it was thrown here at the Satanic Temple. Satanic Temple staff here finding it in the afternoon. Police say it was just before 4.15 yesterday morning that a person threw the explosive device on the porch. No one was inside at the time. Around 4 p.m., the device and damage were found. Bomb technicians made sure the device was no longer a danger and canines swept in and around the satanic temple looking for any possible secondary devices. I spoke to one member of the temple this morning who says many people simply don't understand it. She says it has a library, art, thrones and statues, just like a museum. And this is where she feels most safe. Look at that. should ever have to feel unsafe for being who they are. I even have, sometimes feel like I have to be the closeted Satanist because, you know, <laughs> one of my friends I came out to and they were like, oh my God. Really? You're going to go to hell. Oh my God, let me bring you to my church. And I'm like, no, because I don't feel safe there. <laughs> yeah. Salem police responded to the Satanic Temple before from that. bomb threats and hate crimes. Earlier this year, a Michigan man was arrested after authorities say he plotted to bomb the temple. Back in 2022, a Chelsea man was arrested and charged with setting a fire there. The temple's co founder calls yesterday a horrific act. Look at them solar panels on that bitch. They. They styling it up over there. I wonder how much those solar panels cost. Of attempted terrorism, the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force is investigating this along with Salem Police. For now, live in Salem. No. I noticed something. Right. About. Where was it at? Right about down. At the time, around right 4 p.m., the device and damage were found. Bomb tech. Look, they got the little. Got the little devil man on there. Devil man, devil man, call in. Weather vane on my roof. Yeah, they're right there. Right before it goes to the creature from the Black Lagoon. Is that all you need to say right there? I mean, what are they trying to say? I didn't make the flag. I was telling you about it. They're explaining their own uh, ideals there. Anthony, what's up, Anthony? Mm, 
Anthony, you got a toothache. Dude, I would try some mouthwash would probably help it for sure. Because you got some bacteria going in there and it's trying to fight each other. Bang, banging on that roof, root of your tooth probably. Trying to start some trouble. You need some mouthwash in there to bounce that bacteria up out of there. Yeah, exactly, Wolverine. Crazy. Crazy. For being Satan worshippers. Check this shit out, though. Men punching, uh, men punching random women in New York City is a desperate last grasp of the male rage fueling MAGA. So they're saying that uh, the random New York City attacks are extreme manifestation of men feeling entitled to women's time and attention. There's no greater way to get a woman's time and or attention than to punch her in the face. According to this article. Sonya said never had a teacher's private number, only the email. Yeah, email is one thing. And then when you're at the college level, at least you're dealing with adults at that point. But texting 15-year-olds talking about how was your day and how was your night, beautiful, good night, beautiful. I mean, those are things to you say to somebody that you're interested in in a romantic way. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? I think if uh, MAGA people were punching people in the face, we'd be in a different situation right now, but I ain't one of the gossip. She ain't heard that from me. I need to pull that clip too, by the way. Um, that living color gossip clip. And they said fueled by MAGA. Okay, I can almost guarantee you that no MAGA person just ran up and punched a lady in the head. Dude, I bet you money that that didn't happen. They're all left-handed losers. Always. Not saying it's impossible, but I hardly doubt it. Yeah, I, I highly doubt it. For sure. Do, 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 do. Let's, let's let's see what the VP has to say about uh, canceling the student loan debt. Did you see any of those? They did a couple of little press conferences. Not even press conferences, just little announcement announcements. Then she did a little round table where they had a moderator for some reason. I have no idea. They're going to go back and forth, talk about this bullshit. Are they going to give all these people free, repay their loans for free? I'll just let her explain it to you. Kamala says the new Biden initiative. Shout out to Stabby, uh, Robbie Starbuck for this one too, by the way. Kamala says the new Biden initiative will forgive student loans regardless of your income. And even if you did not graduate for 25 million people, our country's broke and Democrats are signing you up to pay for people's college, even if they make more than you. This is crazy as hell to me. By doing these initiatives, basically what they're saying is that the degrees that these people have are not even worth the paper that they're printed on because they can't get a job that's going to pay them enough money to pay these fucking loans back. Ridiculous. And so today then, building on the work that we've done thus far, I'm announcing a new plan to forgive more loans for 25 million more Americans, including millions of our public servants. And that means, for example, if you've paid undergrad loans for 20 plus years or graduate loans for 25 or more years, your loans will be completely forgiven, regardless of your income and even if you did not graduate. So I'm going to repeat that. If you've paid undergraduate loans for more than 20 years or graduate loans for more than 25 years, those loans will be completely forgiven regardless of your income 
and even if you did not graduate. And forgiveness will why? be automatic for the vast majority of the... If you did not even graduate, why the fuck do you, are they paying your, your debt back? You didn't get the job that you were looking for. You either flunked out or something happened to you. These are going to have to be case-by-case case things where you have to jump through all these hoops and only a certain amount of people are going to be eligible for this shit. 25 million people that we believe will benefit from this approach. And to see if you could be eligible, I would urge everyone to go to student. <laughs> As people calling right now, hell no. Aid.gov, that's studentaid.gov. And so today then... Crazy as hell. So just going to repay all these people's loans. What about paying my mortgage off, man? I've spent a lot of money on that shit. Been paying that for a few years. Ain't nobody going to... I've been paying that for more than 25 years. Anybody going to help me out on that shit? No. What about the people that didn't uh, go into debt? That just worked hard and busted their ass every day? Couldn't afford to go to college, and now they don't get any kind of help either. Fuck out of here. Check this shit out, too. Another left-handed policy that ended up biting them in the ass. Shout out to Andy No for this one. Minneapolis City Council passed a resolution requiring rideshare companies... Pay drivers the equivalent of fifteen fifty seven per hour, which is the minimum wage. This is Minneapolis, not California. California just did the twenty dollars an hour, and people were shutting their shit down immediately. April Fool's Day. They said the threats from Uber and Lyft are about leaving were a bluff, but now both companies will cease operations there. Uh huh. Dumb as hell. Come on there. So here you go here. From the post-millennial. Uber and Lyft to stop services in Minneapolis after city council passes wage requirement for the rideshare companies. Now the people that were depending on that as the alternative or maybe even their main source of income, what's going to happen to those folks? They're totally out of a job now. When is the loan forgiveness supposed to go into effect? Uh, I'm not sure exactly when they were supposed to start that. I think she said effective immediately, honestly. I ended up watching uh, most of the uh, um, little, I don't even know what you would call that thing, the, the little event thing, the canceling student debt get together. And I think she said that shit was going to be effective immediately. So. Yeah, now everybody's asked out. For sure. I mean, that's a serious question, though. What do you do? Lyft and Uber are the big rideshare companies. Are in, are there any other? I'm sure there's some little rinky-dink ones, but people ain't going to use that. They want the name brand stuff. What can be trusted. That shit's so shady, in my opinion, too. There ain't no way I'd get into a car with a stranger. You got me fucked up. All right, let's keep going. Here's one from Liz of TikTok. Why is there a Facebook group, a Facebook dating group for LGBTQ people as young as eight years old with the requirement to post a photo of yourself and write your age? What could possibly go wrong? And here it is right here. Love is love dating group for people ages 8 to 15. LGBTQ LMNOP teens are welcome. Dating group for people 8 to 15 years old. They got 153 members in this bitch. 
Let's see what it is right here. Let's go and see. This group is located in Los Angeles, California. Well, fuck me. I knew it was. Latina! What's going on, Latina? It's a requirement to make an introduction post. Upon entering this group, you are required to make an introduction post with an age and a photo of you. <laughs> Your very first post must include a photo and your age. If you refuse to make an introduction post in the group page, you can be removed from this group. And remember, your post must have your age and a picture of you. Thank you. Dude, how many times are you going to ask for a picture and age? Here's the one, two, three... I'm sorry. This is here's one photo and age. That's one photo and age. That's two photo and age again. Right here, your age in a picture. That's three times in the same fucking post. You asking for the shit, dude? Calm down, brother. Pump your brakes, homeboy. Crazy. Oh, yeah, it's totally unsafe for minors to be on a Facebook group. There ain't no way I would let my kids have some social media in this in this environment, in this climate. Ain't no damn way. Oh, yeah, they won't monitor that one for, at all. Yes, he said I wouldn't let my kid date at all from 8 to 15. You're not dating hell no. You uh, hands and write little love letters in school, but not dating at all. You can hold hands and write love letters. Yeah, I mean I get that, but come on, dude. If the children were up to par psychologically, educationally, you could almost entertain something like that in a perfect world. But kids don't even know how to read. They're so lost out there. I mean, no math, no reading skills. Everybody's dumb as hell. Ain't no, there ain't no way. Ain't no way. All right, so we're going to have to watch Whoopsie Goldberg here too. Give a stupid ass opinion about something. Mom on Instagram got banned for leaving a negative review on a designer page. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uber has an ad to drive your teens around, including the ones going on dates. That was the one uh, that I was looking for. Did, didn't you send that to me in my inbox? I think I, I did post that on the my page on Twitter, though. I'll get there eventually, I'm sure. Let's watch uh, Whoopsie Goldberg say that thou shalt not kill does not include abortion because of war. We let people get killed in war all the time. What's the difference? I don't know. No one is obligated to have an abortion. So no. you never have to have one. And I, I hope no one ever has to have one. But if you find yourself in a position where you have to, I want to make sure, and I'm way past having kids. Mm, I want to make sure. Mm -hmm. that That's one thing that kills me too. All these hookers that are way past having kids, they got a whole lot to shit to say about having kids. Oh, you just say resent it to Twitter. Thank you, Sonya. I'll play it right after this whoopsie clip. That's way past. <laughs> I want to make sure that if you decide this is what you need to do, I'm going to get behind you because I don't know your life. And if you say this is what you need, that's what I'm going to do. What if they are diddlers and they need to get behind some kids like that 54 year old guy? Are you going to get behind them because you don't know their life? I mean, we could play this shit all day. 50 weeks, 75,000 weeks, whatever, how many weeks, it's not. 50 weeks, 75,000 weeks, it don't matter. So she's advocating for 
It done came out the hoo-ha, chop its head off. Nobody's business. It's you, your doctor, and God. That's who you have to be conversational to. And it's not mentioned in the, in the Big Ten, I'm just going to say. No. In the Big Ten. It is not mentioned. The commandment. It's not mentioned in the Big Ten. And then you hear Joy, uh, Joy pop up in the back. Oh, you mean the Ten Commandments. And then somebody surprising jumps right in there. Sonny, she's got the right answer for once. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, because no. I figured God was pretty clear. Here's the stuff that will make your life better on earth. Here's the thing. Don't lie because you don't want people lying to you. Don't mess with somebody's wife because you're going to be mad if they're messing with yours. Be Just, you know, be common sense stuff. Say, thou shalt not kill. They believe that. Yes, well, he Boom, there she goes. Thou shalt not kill. She said it right there herself. That right there will get your ass canceled. What up, aliens in the house? What's up, alien? Turning guns in the house. What up, turning guns? Got the whole crew back together again. And no, Krabby, we're not going to have an after party like we had last week. Forgive me for that, but uh, I had to go ahead and get that out of there. It's going to be a fun one today. Here's the thing. I think thou shalt not kill cannot be used as the, as, the, as the block because we allow wars all the time. Yes, we do. The crusades we allow the death were about yeah. all these things. We so, allow guns. Yes. So there is some conversation to be had here so you can either you thou shalt not kill yeah for everybody yes and everything and everything, and everything or we have to talk about all the things that you and i yes. need to do and i have to yes i i need to give you yeah so what's your opinion on that i mean i think it was pretty clear it says thou shalt not kill that would probably go for war and all that shit too but like she said crusades in there too so i mean where's the truth at and all that shit it's complicated i know but i think the thou shalt not kill is pretty fucking uh explanatory self-explanatory right there it's it's right there so we were just talking about the uber um, giving uh, rides to teenagers because you don't want to be a, fuck my ass. You don't want to be a responsible adult, so you're gonna let these people drive your kids around now. So this is called in love Uber teen accounts now. It's just got stupid music on here, so we're not gonna have to listen to the music. I mean, it's, I'll sing to you if you want me to. T, I'm with TJ. Be home at 7. And this was the one of the first red flags for me. The father is at work. He's at the dry cleaner. He's at Amazon, wherever the hell he's at. And he's getting a text from his daughter telling him where she's going to be at what time. It should have been... Have your ass home by 7 o'clock and tell TJ to keep his hands to himself. Or bring your ass home now. You ain't going to no damn TJ's house. Then here he goes. It says your teen is on the way to Vista Cinemas. So it's going to give you updates on where they are. They're hanging out together, having a good time. He's trying to put his hand on her leg. We all been there. It shows where the car is, passing the high school. Here's the cinemas. Uber teen accounts for irresponsible parents that don't keep up with their kids and expect Uber to chaperone them and take them all over the place. What happened to parents just being parents and taking care of your own damn kids? I don't get it. Yeah, Krabby Sony is the one that claimed that climate change caused the cicadas, earthquakes, and solar eclipses. Yeah, and they all checked her on that shit, too. They were like, what, bitch? What are you talking about? That's not in the script. 
That is not in the script. Boop. Drop that down. Do 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 do. Boop. <laughs> Sonny said, "TJ, my ass. TJ is the problem. Exactly." Crazy as hell. I wouldn't do it. I mean, people pretty much ignore their children or don't spend any quality time with them, don't know anything about them, and then they wonder why they're fucked up and want to do weird shit. Uber tender for teens is probably more like it. Yeah, you're, you're probably more accurate with that. Let's move on to the next one. Did y'all see the uh, that April River stabbing that happened in Wisconsin? Well, the guy that stabbed the teenagers, he's saying that he did it in self-defense. And if you look at the footage, they were knocking him down, pushing him. There were like seven all around him. And from what he says in his story, the teenager pulled the knife on him and he bent his wrist back and put it into his own belly. He stabbed the guy. And I don't know if he took it away from him and stabbed another girl or what, but I saw him actually stab those people. He was going boom, boom, stabbing them. We're going to watch a tad bit of it right here. Uh, some of his uh, police interview. Shout out to Colin Rugg for this one. Uh, he says the Wisconsin engineer Nikolai Mew, who stabbed the teens on the Apple River in Wisconsin, says he was acting in self-defense. Mew said the teens surrounded him like wolves after they accused him of being a pedophile. The 54-year-old man says he volunteered for a friend to go looking for a lost phone in the water. Mew said uh, he became fearful as the teens surrounded him and began assaulting him. All of a sudden, they were like wolves around me, and they were attacking me from all directions. I truly feared for my life. They came on to me. They hit me. They got on top of me, and I don't remember anything after that. So the court uh, case is going on right now. It's been live the last few days. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Alien. I appreciate that. I forgot I'd, I'd do be a little stylish tonight instead of just the regular merchandise that I got, T-shirts and stuff. We can we can style too. We can pop that collar. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, okay, Alien, you saw that today. So they had the little black kid on the stand, and they were asking him. He's the one that said that the guy was being a pedophile. He said that he saw the guy taking pictures of girls or kids. And then they asked him on the stand, well, why did you say that? And he said, I don't know. There was a lot going on. He was trying to justify why they should all beat this dude's ass. That's probably what it was. They were all trying to justify each other. Anthony said he was acting in self-defense and all the teens lied the first time. Yeah, I... The video pretty much speaks for itself. And we always know how it goes when you're watching video. There's always something that happens before the recording bush the button gets pushed, usually. What happened before that, we don't really know. That's going to be up to witness statements uh, and people that were there to say, okay, this is what happened. But as soon as the video gets rolling, you can see, like, dude, he's got seven people on him and they're younger. They're more agile. He's flipping out. They said he was on medication for PTSD. I mean, what would you do in that situation? Let's watch it right quick. You think he could have walked away? Yeah, he could have walked away. I, th I think uh, in the video you'll see that too. He was trying to get away, but he was also looking for something, and they just kept on with it, kept on with it, and... Yeah, he could have walked away. 
But I think when he was trying to walk away, they were pushing him down and shit. So let's let's watch and see where we come up on this. Get some sound here. Went to the hospital with injuries. Oh my god. And uh, one person died. Oh no. No. Oh my um, god. Oh my god. They were pointing down river and saying, "Go, go, get away." Some ex. What are they doing with their hands? They're touching me. When you say touching you, is that something gentle? No, they're pushing. Uh, so, uh, Madison, she pushed against my left shoulder. She she pushed against my chest. She was pointing her finger right at my face. She was yelling at me, very close to my face. I had my back at them, um, still scanning the water, and they were right behind me. They got that close. They, within seconds, they were right behind me. At some point, did you see other people from another group? Yes. What uh, did you see? Um, I saw uh, what I seemed to me at the time uh, adults coming over from the other side of the river. And when you saw um, adults coming over from the other side of the river, what did you do? I uh, walked towards them. I walked towards this. The first one was, a, uh, uh, it was Madison. When you walked towards Madison, where were the six teenage boys that had been yelling at you? They're following me. Okay. Were you in their path as you walked across the river towards Madison? No. Did they have a peer, as far as you know, did they have a clear path down the river if they wanted? More than plenty. Can I? Yes, I'm uh, uh, reaching for my pocket knife. Why? Because uh, at one point my uh, fear was getting really high. And okay. I, I, I was getting ready to pull it out. Okay. Um, do you remember, other than what you've talked about, Madison Cohen pulling you, which we saw, do you remember anybody else touching, pushing, grabbing you in any way? Uh, the, the two ladies, yeah. yeah. Do you showing you here what's 2472, 2478, 2481. Do you remember what's happening in those photos? Yes, yes. Um, this one, the lady on my right side, she uh, she grabbed my my arm and she was pushing against my uh, my arm. And did that increase your level of comfort or increase your level of fear or something different? So it decreased my level uh, the level of comfort and increased my uh, my fear. So I believe right there at that moment is when he first stabbed her because I mean everybody's all around. They're all unarmed, so you can say that, like, where is the threat to your life other than the fact they're pushing him down under the water? It wouldn't take long for somebody to push him and knock his head on a fucking rock, or... Here's the, here's the little the black kid I was telling you about that was a witness to the... He was the witness, and he also filmed the altercation with Nikolai Mew, lied to the crowd and told them he was taking pictures of little girls, which egged them on to attack the man when he was then defending himself against them. So if he wouldn't have escalated the situation, maybe it wouldn't have got so bad. Who knows? You also said to the police, he came out of the bushes, and he was taking pictures of the girls. Yes, I said that. No, I said that. I, I understand you said it. Did you see it? Yes. So you saw Mr. Mew with his camera that afternoon taking pictures of little girls. That's what you're telling this jury. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. No, that's what I said. No, I, like I said, I understand you said it. Is it true? Oh, I don't know. Why would you say it if you don't know if it's true? <laughs> there was a lot going on. <laughs> what? Hey, hey.
Hey, it was a lot. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. It was a lot going on. You know what I'm saying? Like, he could have been taking pictures of little girls and shit. I don't know. All I know was shit was popping off. A lot was going on. And, and hey, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Crazy as hell. On March, 7th, on March 7th of 2024? No, that. argumentative. Overruled. Say it one more time for me. I just want to make sure you understand, okay? On March 7th of 2024, you have a... You March. have a... Hold on. You have a recorded interview with uh, investigators O'Keefe and Justness, I think is how you pronounce his name. They speak to you about this incident, right? Yes? Yes. And on March 7th of 2024, you tell these law enforcement officers that he comes out of the bushes and that he's taking pictures of girls. Right? Yes. No. Yes. That's not true, is it? I guess so. <laughs> that's <laughs> it's it's hard to say because like that's what I recall from the the day that happened. That's what I was telling the officer. Okay. You'd agree when you were interviewed by the officers back in twenty twenty two, you never said anything about him taking photos of little girls, right? Um, I don't remember that. Do you? That was a month ago I said that, though. That, hey, that was a month ago he said that, though, y'all. So, come on, man. Why y'all keep hounding me? Well, why y'all keep hounding me about something happened a month ago? I mean, come on, bro. So much has happened since then. So much was happening at that time. I don't know how y'all expect me to process all this. I mean, y'all got to get up off me with this trash. Come on now. Yeah, I think they did. Ch they they took all their phones, Sonia, I believe. So they would find out if there were pictures of on uh, his phone of little girls or not. I think he was just trying to justify that ass whipping. You know what I mean? They all wanted to start some shit. They they were cocky. Let me try to find the whole video here. Boom boo do boo doom boom 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 bang it boom 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 Okay, yeah, so. I'm just gonna go scroll from 2673. 2680, is that your shorts? Yep. So this was some footage going on on the trial where they knocked him down. He's on his back, and here they come slapping him. Now, do these people feel look like they're in fear for their life when they're attacking him when he's on the ground like that? Now they're coming up pushing him. There's three of them on him right now. So these are three young men on him pushing him down into the water. Boom, he just got him right there. So you stabbed him right there and kind of almost kind of sliced him Stop up a little bit when he was doing it. And it depend on how that blade that was angled. It looked to me like it was just a straight shot, like the uh, dull, pl dull, the dull part on top slicey part sharp edge on the bottom so when he went up with the cut it it couldn't have, it wasn't as bad as it could have been yeah so the teens fuck around and find out exactly Krabby. exactly action of frames i just went through aj are those is that the part where you got hit yeah. with the knife yeah yeah, is that the part where you got the knife? And then he, I would ask him, so after you got stabbed and you were laying in the water, 
Do you think that there was a way you could have avoided that at that time? Do you think that attacking this dude probably wouldn't have resulted in you being laying in the water bloody as fuck right now if you wouldn't have attacked him? Will the teens get in trouble for lying under oath? I don't know. Yep. It looks like uh, three dudes attacking in the water. I mean, what do you do? If you're in that situation, what do you do? Luckily, he had a pocket knife. What would have happened to him if he didn't have the pocket knife? Who would have called it off first? They would have knocked him unconscious and left him in the water to drown. Or he would have fell and hurt himself and not be able to get back to his family. What would have been the outcome if he didn't stab these people and stop the altercation? He stopped it. They escalated it. He stopped it. Yep, it doesn't take much. And that, did you know that guy's name at the time? No. Now, you know, know him as Nick Lamu. Yeah. Now he's trying to cry like a bitch and try to act all sympathetic in there. Just ask him, would did you have got stabbed if you wouldn't have started shit with this other guy? Or if you never would have got into an altercation with this other guy? Because you know that'd be objected to left, right, and center. It's all about how you word it. Check Twitter. Okay, Sonya, thank you. Come on, crybaby. Man with a hairdo like that don't need to be crying. But he's looking to see if anybody's absorbing his pain. Wipe away them fake tears. Look at him. Trying to breathe all heavy, acting weird. Get your, get your tissue. Get your nose ring figured out. Exactly. I want to ask you a question. Quick. Before I... This, this exhibit... Um, to, to, today, Junior? Yeah, turning guns. Char charge all these teens with attempted murder. Next case, please. Yeah, they got to go through all the formalities and whatnot, but I think we all know where it's going. If you know, I don't want you to speculate, but do you know if that's... And again, don't answer. If you, if you don't know, that's fine to say you don't know. Is that from the slice, or was it... Did you have further incisions from surgery? No, that's all from the slice. There's... Um, it actually goes from like you can't see it super well in the picture but it goes above my rib cage too they they didn't have to open me up i was already open yeah he sliced them you know, a little bit can you show with your hands about how long the laceration was uh, yeah about that i mean it's below the belt line to above my ribs are you comfortable showing do you have a scar yeah quite a quite a big one are you they're gonna show his uh are you comfortable scar here that was probably shown in the courtroom we're watching what was happening on court so uh if they show that here it's gonna be a graphic warning for you there put this uh, graphic warning up there just in case they show that Come on, homeboy. Today, Junior. I couldn't be a judge. I'd be like, come on, let's go. Let's go. We got places to be. Ooh, we fucked around and found out. Look at that one. From asshole to appetite is what my dad would say. Okay. Thank you. Hmm. Now, my next question would be, sir, are you ever going to try to attack anybody else in the river ever again? Objection. Yep, so he fucked around and found out. And I can see Alien's point of view, too, on that. If That's that's why they're going through the whole court thing. You know what I mean? And this right here is the other portion where you can see right here, this young lady, she got stabbed, too. And she's looking at her, her side like, oh, my God, he stabbed me. Like, um... This goes for anybody out there. When you have close contact with somebody 
and it's not a good contact, there's a potential for anything to happen. They could have a pen. They could have a knife. They could have acid. They could have sand. They could have dirt. They could co throw cooties on you. You don't know what the hell. You're getting into mutual combat with somebody. Never underestimate your opponent. What's happening to you there? Somebody is going for my throat, squeezing my throat. Do you remember how that felt? I felt pain. I couldn't breathe. See right Scared. there, they're trying to choke him. And, showing and choking somebody, that's a, dominate, a dominating type trait. You're not going to try to choke somebody to sing them happy birthday. You know what I mean? And when he started, when he was trying to choke the guy, his his hand was free, and he said, "Hey, I'm going for it!" Boom, he got him too. The next set of slides here: twenty nine, ninety eight, ninety nine, and three thousand. What did you think was going to happen to you in that moment? The whole time, I I, I felt like I was going to die. So he uh, basically, I feared for my life. And in response to that, here's slide 3000. Did you do something in response to that? I reached out and, uh, and stabbed him. When you used your knife, and again, this is open-ended. You can ask it any way you want. Did you, were you trying to kill somebody? Absolutely not. Um, what were you trying to do? I was just trying to defend myself. I'm, dude, I'm trying to get them off me. They are attacking me left and right, pushing me under the water. I thought I was going to die. I just wanted them to leave me alone. I told them several times, leave me alone. Oh, yeah, exactly. And they were saying that there was a box cutter or something on the... They did a whole they did a whole dive team out there to try to find the weapon. They said they found a box cutter or some shit out there, too. And that could have been somebody else's shit that got dropped out there. Who knows? But, uh... SE, from what I understand, he was told by a friend to go over there and try to find a cell phone. And somehow it interrupted the kids floating down the river. When you're floating down the river, I don't know if y'all you guys have ever done that before. But you saw how they got their little inner tubes tied together. They all tie their inner tubes together and you all float down the river together. Usually with a big cooler full of beer. And I'm pretty sure all those kids were drinking. Some of them, maybe none of them, I don't know. If they did toxicology on all that shit, that'd be something that would come out. But uh, they were going and having a good time, and they worlds collided, man. You got somebody that uh, I don't I don't know what exactly started the altercation, but we'll find all that out when the trial is all over, I guess. Let's get back to this thing. After this was again, we've seen the video. You talk to investigator Hart. So I want to ask you a little bit about that for a moment. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Do you independently, well, let me say, you've watched the video here in court, correct? Yes. And you watched the video prior to that. We've watched it together, right? Yes. Does watching that video refresh your memory? Do you have an independent memory of that conversation with investigator Hart? No. Do you remember what it is you said other than seeing things on the video? Other than uh, I lied about the knife, uh, that's what I remember, you know, after, yeah, I lied about the knife. Yeah, that was the part, too, where he lied about the knife. Like I said at the beginning, he said that the guy pulled a knife on him when they're, they're having the first interaction with the police. He's giving the interview. The guy pulled the knife on me. I took his wrist and stabbed, turned it in and stabbed him. I made him stab himself or I stabbed him there. That's where he's fucking up already. A jury can say, hey, well, was he lying then or is he lying now? Because we know for a fact that he's lying. It was his knife. He pulled it out of his own pocket. You just heard him say it right there on the stand. He, and there's photographic evidence. There's video evidence of it. So he's lied too. The kids lied and he lied. 
if he just would have straight out said, hey, they they were attacking me. I had my pocket knife. I had to defend myself. That's what it's there for. Do you remember actually saying that in that moment, or you just remember seeing that and that's what you remember seeing? I remember seeing it in the video. Okay. Do you remember how you were feeling during that time at all? Do you have any memory about that? Not much. Okay. What's happened? So, uh, Attorney Gunn says, I fly fish a lot and typically carry a, what is called a river knife. In my case, uh, my waders start filling with water, basically a diver's knife. If he had one of those, wow. And is that one of those where it has a sharp edge on both sides? So, because he was going up with him on the dull side, but if he, if he had one of those where... I mean, it's got a straight up point or it's somewhat curvy, but it's sharp on both sides. Oh, man. Filet o fish for real. Yep, he lied about the knife. Yes, he says, I don't know. I'm just saying having three people coming at me in shallow water and I'm getting choked. I'm trying to stop the threat. Yeah, I mean, you don't know what people are going to do. That's a legitimate thing. You're like, you don't know what people are going to do. You never met these people before. They could drown me right now. If I didn't stab him, would he just would have kept on drowning me? I don't know. Alien says, when the word, when you word it that way, y'all wording it, of course, it sounds like they were in the wrong, but there are all kinds of ways to view it. Yeah, again, and that's why they're going through the trial so they can go step by step by step to see what everybody experienced uh, and get to the, the actual truth of the issue. Yeah, so he killed one of the kids, they said. 2994 and 2997. Is that you? Yes. What's happening to you there? Yeah, so he, so uh, I guess they said, they said deceased. For clarification, these are deceased victim Isaac Schumann's hands. Well, the dude looked like he was straight up alive right there on the stand. I don't know if he died after the fact. I don't think he did. Uh, okay, watch this footage of it here. Graphic content. So the kid is jumping. When he's jumping onto him, try to keep it out of view there a little bit, but you can see he's he's coming toward him. He's not lunging at him and, like, stabbing him with the knife. He's coming toward him, and he's jumping onto the knife himself. You know what I'm saying? He's, like, jumping onto the guy. We could go on and on with this shit, but the, the case is still ongoing right now as far as I know. And, um, okay, so here's here's how it started. Like, they, this was the fight that started the whole thing. Video of the, the deadly fight that led to Apple River stabbing shown during opening arguments. So he's going, he's running over to them. He looks like he's got a snorkel in his mouth. In, in his hand, I'm sorry. Then he put it in his mouth. Like he's grabbing them and trying to dip them out of the inner tubes or something. So at the very beginning, he's running over to them. Like he's coming over to them now. They have a right to defend themselves from some strange motherfucker coming over here trying to start messing with them. So now they're laughing at him because he just lost his snorkel. So whatever that was that caused him to come over there, here he is. I see all their tubes are tied up together. Oh, 
What do you say? But see, now he's away from him now. Like he's over there trying to find the phone or the snorkel or whatever it was. Okay, so the guy that's filming this right now, he's the black kid because he just said that I got that part on camera where he was trying to film little girls. He's looking for little girls. Okay, it's starting to get a little bit chaotic here now. They're not doing anything to him necessarily. They're just acting wild, wilding out, doing weird shit. Now they start touching him though now. And he's going to be like, dude, get off me. Then they start pushing him and punching him. Here's where shit goes. Boom, he got him right there. That's how fast it happened. He already had the knife out. He got He got that thing quick. Boom, boom, he stabbed him. Look, there's your friend laying in the fucking water. They see all the blood in the water. They're like, oh my God, what happened? You see how it ended all that shit, though? Yeah, one of them died, Wolverine. Yeah, so whoever the Isaac kid was... Like, he's under the water, I guess, because didn't nobody take him out. It's so chaotic right there, it's hard to tell exactly what all happened, but the dude stabbed two people, maybe even three people there. Was it the girl? I think she got it, too. It's hard to tell. It's so chaotic there. Let's watch again. You guys want to watch this again? We'll watch the whole clip again. They all seem like they overreacted. It was chaos, man. Absolutely. I don't know if he's drunk or not. And like I said, when you're going on the river normally, that's what the adults do. These are kids. I don't know what their ages are, if they're even uh, allowed to drink, but you just got to say, statistically speaking, with kids on the river doing dumb shit, it's a possibility they were. No next, okay. Boom. So we'll keep an eye on that case and see how it goes. Let's see what Sonya just sent to me. Littleton Schools bus aide arrested for punching and striking children, possibly. Graphic content, viewer discretion is advised. School aide arrested for punching, kicking a nonverbal student. Oh, hell no. Well, she elbowed him right there. Like punching him. And... Wow. 
Why would you do that? That's a child. And he ain't going to tell nobody. This is a reason why I don't like kids riding the bus like that because shit like this can happen to them and how, how can they tell anybody? Disgusting. And even you're on camera too. Don't you understand that there's cameras on the bus so she don't care or she doesn't know or... No audio on this one. And she's going to like sit on him or something. What's she trying to do? And if this is how you feel about kids or whatever, why even be, why even have this job? If you hate your life so much and you hate your job so much, why even do it? Uh, just look up Apple River Stabbing Sonia and you'll find it. Apple River Stabbing. Crazy. I hope this bitch got jail time. Video showing a woman repeatedly hitting a nonverbal boy as he was strapped into a harness on a bus has prompted Inglewood police to arrest her on suspicion of felony assault. Good, go to jail. Go straight to jail. Sonia's got the... It was in Denver, Colorado. She was arrested for caught on video for beating a disabled child. God damn, dude. Look at his ear. She hit him, she hit him that hard to, to mess his ear up like that? And put big ass bruises on him? Man. I know if I picked my kid up from school and saw them bruises on him like that, It'd be a different type of news story. That's all I can say. Here's your perpetrator right here. This piece of filth. Your opinion is that's why they take the job, probably. Exactly. Turning guns. What happened to the American father figure? Probably killed by some one of these weird motherfuckers right here. Crazy as hell. Hope she gets under the jail. Crazy. I mean, would execution be out of the realm of possibility or just life in jail? You tell me how you feel about it. Devin, what's happening, Devin? Wood chipper for her, too. <laughs> yep. Anybody that uh, does harm to a kid, that's automatic wood chipper. Crazy as hell. do 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 yeah, so that was that one. Let's go on to this next case here. Did y'all see this story? Contractor was killed when she walks into an Air Force drone propeller while looking down at her device. This was the young lady right here. Contractor killed. Air Force civilian contractor Stephanie Cosimo Cosme was killed after she was walking under the drone propeller. I'm sure this is probably this back one back here. Why would you be looking down at anything other than what's in front of you if you're on the runway? You know there's all kinds of shit out there that can fuck you up. Yep, one of these right here. 
she lost situational awareness. Mm. She hit the proverbial wood chipper, as it were. R.I.P. to that young lady. Situational awareness, man, that shit will keep you alive, you know what I mean? Let's see where we're going to next. Oh, yeah, just see where the Border Patrol was giving out uh, glasses so the illegal aliens could check out the eclipse. How hospitable. Do, 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 do. Let's see where we're going here next. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is a local story. To, uh, possible teachers under investigation for obscene photo taken in a school bathroom. This thing's starting to slow down on me. Might have to cut it here soon. I'm Mario Lowry. And I'm Marius Payton. Up until tonight, all we knew is that teacher John Duncan had been suspended from the Rutherford County School after the TBI started asking questions. But our chief investigative reporter, Jeremy Finley, obtains the reason why they started asking questions. So the TBI confirms they are investigating that Duncan had taken an inappropriate photo of himself inside of a school. We've now obtained that photo, but there's more, a warning. These are troubling details and certainly not for young viewers. It started with photo after photo. Every single day I was getting the pictures, I was getting the pictures. Sent to Kayla Lee in Alabama through social media from a man in Tennessee she didn't even know. Even when she says he sent a picture of himself in a bathroom exposing himself, she was at first just disgusted, then became alarmed when she got this message depicting sex with a student. That was what was really scary, so I was like, I have to look this guy up. The guy who sent Lee the post gave the name John. She found the photos matched with the same name of a John Duncan who worked, according to a LinkedIn profile, as the former athletic director at Antioch High School. And here's the message she received from the sender. You can see we've blurred out most of it. It describes violent sex with a student athlete in high school. And here's the message she received from the sender. You can see we've blurred. All right, so we're going to read what this message says that he sent to this young lady. Hispanic girl with big blank on my tennis team, always flirting with me and needed a ride home after practice one night. She reached over and started blank while I drive. I pulled over and blank the back seat, then blank with the handle of her tennis racket because I'm a bit of a sadist and I like causing pain. It stretched the blank and the look of discomfort on her face made me blank. Something's uh, hidden by the thing. Scary after that because blank. Psycho. Now, most of it. It describes violent sex with a student athlete and how he got her pregnant. I literally was horrified. I like ran into my roommate's room and I was like, what can I do about this? And she was like, definitely report it. She posted it on a Facebook page saying she was worried for the children on his team. I saw a Facebook post. And in Murfreesboro, Madison Martin read... Dude, what the hell's going on on Facebook, man? They need to investigate the hell out of the people that use that platform. Lee's concerned post. Yeah, disgusted is a good word. Um, it just, it made me really uncomfortable. She looked up the same name and saw a John Duncan was now teaching at Daniel McKee Alternative School. So she called the school. An email shows she corresponded with the TBI. Take a closer look at the graphic photo. The women believe it was taken in a school bathroom. The sign in the back counts down the days till spring break. Gross. If he's a teacher and he's taking pictures like that inside of a school bathroom, that's not okay. One of Lee's friends texted with the person who sent the photos and the message. 
In the text, he writes, I made all of it up. I was lying. Do what you got to do. Lee's friend wrote back, lying about raping a child isn't okay. The subscriber you have dialed is not in service. WSV4 investigates called the number two, but it's now disconnected. All the TBI will say is that it's an ongoing investigation. And Rutherford County Schools report Duncan is on unpaid suspension pending the outcome of the law enforcement on paid investigation. Suspension. Even if he made it up and it was all a joke or whatever, just having those thoughts, you don't need to be around kids. John Duncan is also running for the Rutherford County School Board. When he filed to run, he provided a phone number and an email. We tried to contact him through those as well as through a family member, but he did not respond by our deadline. We will keep you crazy. Suspended with pay when we fired and put in jail. What the hell is going on in this world? One second here to get back on track. Do 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 do. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me. I appreciate y'all. Do, 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 do. Oh shit, here was another crazy story. Did y'all see this? You seen this? You heard about this? Las Vegas attorney kills two, including uh, and himself in the Summerlin Law Office shooting. This was in Las Vegas. This happened uh, yesterday or earlier this morning. Watch this shit. Yeah, he was scared. They didn't know what was going on. They and, t and they could hear, but they didn't know what was going on. So they were in a locked room and they were on lockdown. A terrifying Monday morning in Summerlin as a man walks into an office building and opens fire. Two people are dead and the gunman is as well as the shooting put an entire community on edge and triggered a massive emergency response. Thanks for joining us at five. I'm Vanessa Murphy. This is a crazy ass story right here. The attorney, it was a whole uh, a child custody dispute where they were doing a deposition and the wife and the husband, obviously they're getting a divorce and trying to figure out child custody. Well, each of their fathers were representing them in their custody dispute. So both of their fathers are attorneys. The husband's father killed the ex-wife of his son and her new husband, boyfriend, and their lawyer, if that makes sense. Let's go. I'm Brian Loftus. Sources identifying the victims as prominent lawyer Dennis Prince and his wife Ashley all happened at a law office on West Charleston, right near Pavilion Center, prompting roadways to be shut down for hours. We are standing by for a live press conference. We'll bring it to you as soon as it's happened. They're starting now. Let's listen in. Sheriff, give a brief on the incident that transpired here. Hey, peace out, uh, Krabby Turtle. Thanks for coming. I got one more, and then we're jumping over to the Rumble side. I'm just conducting a follow-up briefing to clean up anything that maybe that uh, was left unanswered or different additional facts that we've learned uh, since the initial briefing. Uh, I'll start from the beginning. Uh, earlier today at approximately 10.04 a.m., uh, we received a report of a shooting uh, inside the City National Bank building located at 10,801 West Charleston. Uh, which is located directly behind me. Specifically, it was at the fifth floor. And during that initial uh, broadcast, our officers responded to a report of shots fired and uh, numerous gunshots in the building. Uh, officers arrived on scene uh, in very quick fashion. Uh, as the sheriff briefed out earlier today, uh, we treated it as an active shooter where we deployed multiple teams into the building along with our uh, fire department uh, to see if there, were, if there was an actual active shooter. Uh, fortunately, we were able to uh, uh, see that the scene was located in a very uh, in one specific suite, that's Suite 560, which is the Prince Law Group. As officers uh, went into that uh, into that um, suite, uh, they located the scene of the shooting, and they located uh, our three deceased victims. 
Uh, one deceased victim is a female in her 30s. Another one is a male in his 50s. Our suspect is also deceased here on scene, and he is a male in his 70s. What we have learned from the initial briefing is, is very similar to what has already been reported on the papers, is that uh, there were seven people here taking part in a de deposition inside the Prince Law Group. Three of them uh, represented one party, three of them represented the other part, and one was a court reporter. Shortly into the deposition, approximately three to four minutes, uh, the, one of the party, the suspect, stood up and began opening fire on the two victims across uh, the table from him. Unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, they are deceased. Uh, they're on the scene here, and uh, the suspect is deceased also. Uh, the other people who were in the room at the time of the shooting, thankfully, were able to quickly get away, uh, call police, and they've everyone else has been cooperative and interviewed by police. Uh, please keep them in their prayers. Uh, no matter what side of this table they are on at this time, this is a pretty traumatic event, uh, and we believe there is no additional threats at this time based on any evidence we have. Our homicide team uh, is on the scene. They're conducting their investigation. We'll be out here for an extended period of time as we conduct uh, our investigation. Again, most of the crime scene is, all the crime scene pretty much is located in Suite 560. Um, real quick, for all the people who go to work here at City National Bank, uh, the building here, the uh, all of them were evacuated and they did so very orderly and they and they were able to move them over to uh, the Red Rock uh, Casino who helped us out with containing all of them. Uh go a little bit further here. Yeah, here we go. The reporters explain a little bit further. Father, uh, the father involved in the child custody dispute. Where is that, that father, like the son? The other man who is the parent of the child. He's a county. We've spoken to him and we've interviewed him at this point. So, all right. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate your time. <laughs> Hearing there from police about the shooting at City National Bank building on the fifth floor, we did learn multiple shots were fired. There were seven people in that room, in that suite for the deposition, and it was treated by police as an active shooter situation. Uh, for those that work into the building, everyone was evac uh, and taken to a safe location. The building will remain open in terms of those who work there, except for, as police mentioned, Suite 560, where this crime occurred. Yeah, and Lieutenant Jason Johansson saying the two victims were the intended yeah. target. Uh, seven people in that room, as you mentioned, uh, involved in a deposition, a child custody case, three people, three people, and a court reporter. Homicide will be, the team will be on scene for hours. We'll continue to update you on 8newsnow.com as well as on air. And the 8 News Now investigators' sources identified the victims of the incident earlier. Uh, one of the most tragic parts about this, children are left behind. An infant no longer has a mother and father. That mom and dad, Dennis and Ashley Prince. Dennis, a well-known Las Vegas attorney who we've interviewed several times here at 8 News Now. The shooting happening inside his law office. Attorney Robert Eglett, a close friend of Prince calling this a family's worst nightmare. I talked with him on the phone earlier, just <coughs> devastated. He says in addition to their infant child, they both had children from previous relationships. Dennis, a preteen son and two adult children. Ashley, a four and five year old. Now, sources tell us the shooter is attorney Joe Houston II. I believe this is video of his law office. The 8 News Now investigators have tried piecing this all together, and here's what we've learned. Ashley was in a custody dispute with her ex, Dylan Houston. He's also a Las Vegas attorney. His father is Joe. Court records show Joe was representing Dylan while Dennis was representing his wife, Ashley. Sources tell us Joe Houston shot and killed Dennis and Ashley Prince before turning the gun on himself. Now, as we mentioned. Okay, so that's they had to make a graph even there for it because it's kind of confusing. I said uh, it was the father. So the father of this gentleman, this was his ex-wife, or they have kids together. Now she was married to this new uh, attorney. They, their last name is Prince now because they're married. 
And Joe Houston was representing his kid in the lawsuit. And Dennis is representing his wife in the lawsuit. So they're all meeting together to do the deposition. Joe comes out and says, hey, I don't like how this shit's going. Boom, 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 boom. Kill you and then kill myself. Done. That's crazy as hell. That's crazy as hell. Peace out, Krabby. Thanks for coming, bro. All right, let's go to the village of Dalton. Last night they had they have their monthly board meeting, and uh, I think they're supposed to be every week. Either way, monthly or weekly, I can't remember. But last week they were supposed to have a meeting, and they had one. And shit got crazy as hell. The cops threatened to shut the meeting down several times. They said, um, y'all are getting too wild in here. One more uh, outburst and we're going to shut this whole meeting down. We're going to shut it down. And they had public comments at the time before they even got into doing the regular business. And Tiffany Henry did show up and, uh, it was fucking chaos in there. At first, it was kind of going good, but then one lady got up there and was talking about how her kid got killed and what were the cops going to do about it. It's just too much violence and this and that, and uh, it got everybody riled up again, and they're like, hell yeah, I want to speak my truth now. And then everybody got up there talking about how they wanted her to leave. They didn't want her there no more. And the, everybody was getting uh, restless. The police were standing by the fucking podium and we're holding the mic and when somebody got done he pushed it out of the way he's like all right you're done your three minutes is up they had him on a timer they was going your three minutes is up and then they changed it to two minutes or back and forth it was crazy so this week they had uh last week let me finish all that they ended the meeting early because the mayor vetoed basically their, um, they're supposed to want to do an investigation into her and she has the veto power. She says, no, I'm not doing that. So fuck y'all. And they were like, you know what? There are not, there are more people want to be in the building. So a lot of people were still waiting outside and, uh, the cops were getting antsy trying to shut it down several times. Like I said, so then the trustees were just like, fuck it. We're out then. So they bounced out. That ended the whole meeting. They tried to go a little further, and then finally she said, you know what, we're going to end the meeting. Cops, uh, La uh, Captain Lacey was, or Chief Lacey was like, no, I'm done with this. Everybody leave. We're done. Shutting it down for safety reasons. That's what he kept saying. Safety precautions. There have been threats on their life, this and that or whatever, which who knows, neither here nor there. I don't know. But, um... They had another meeting last night to reconvene and finish the meeting from the week before. So that's what this meeting was about. And this time, Tiffany H uh, uh, Henyer did not show up. The trustees were all there. The vibe in the place was way, way better. It was cooler. Everybody felt more loving. And last time we talked about the... Uh, I don't know. I think we showed that clip of uh, where the grandmother got kicked out of the Easter uh, Easter egg hunt, a little Easter egg party that they had. That little kid was crying and shit. <coughs> Excuse me. Maybe that was on uh, Homeboy's channel, but either way. Excuse me. The... Uh, trustees brought out the Easter bunny and shit to kind of make it up to that kid because he was crying and whatnot. He had a terrible ordeal with the cops being there. First time interacting with the cops, that was not a good example for them. Yeah, exactly. Latina, I agree. They were getting wild up in there. So anyway, they uh, had the Easter bunny come in there and make all this shit right. Everything's all positive and going good. And I see Lori Lightfoot in the crowd and they were speculation that Lori Lightfoot was going to be there. And I'm like, okay, what the fuck is she doing there? 
So basically, the people in the town believe that since the, she was a big mayor and she did something before, d destroyed Chicago, I don't know, they uh, think that she's going to be a good choice for leading the investigation into the corruption of Tiffany Henyard when she did, didn't get reelected because everybody thought she, she was corrupt, allegedly. She had a few scandals. And uh, any time that the press wanted to ask her questions, she would shut it down. I know y'all saw those videos. So then during this thing, they had a uh, question and answer with the, the citizens again. And uh, there was one young man that got up there. He was a little older gentleman, you know, probably a Vietnam vet or so. And uh, he just started asking her straight up, like, you had controversies before when you were uh, the mayor in Chicago. You had incidences. You want to speak to those? Well, how can we trust you? And she's like, I don't know what incidences you're talking about. We're, we're going to move forward. We're just going to move on. And that's what she does every time. She was starting to get offended. Dude, and you hear the crowd. They fucking loved it. They were so supportive of her being there. And of course, she's a politician. She's going to say whatever they want them, whatever they want to hear. But it's uh, this shit's going to get swept under the rug. But one of the, the gentlemen there said that uh, he he knows Lori Lightfoot and he believes she's going to do a, a good job, so... It remains to be seen, but let's watch this video where they actually um, vote for her to be the special investigator. It's crazy. The The crowd cheers. They, they go wild. Um, this is motion by Mayor Pro Tem House and Trustee Belcher that we amend agenda items 5B and 5C to appoint Lori E. Lightfoot as special <laughs> investigator for the Business Village of Dalton at a rate of four hundred dollars to investigate matters read by Mayor Pro Tem Justy, Trustee no, Mayor Pro Tem House. Trustee Norwood. Aye. Trustee Tammy Brown. Aye. Trustee House. Aye. Trustee Belcher. Aye. Motion passed. And they got what they wanted. And then she goes shaking hands with everybody. They all believe her. And if you listen to all these trustees on here, they seem like they got a good heart. They got their head in the right place. All right. But I don't I don't know what they if they know what they're getting themselves into. Trying to put uh, a corruption investigation on Tiffany Henyard with this woman leading it. And then Lori Lightfoot, before she got actually voted in there, she gave a little speech. And you would think that after she was voted in, she would give a little speech and say, you know, thank you all for voting me in. I'm going to do everything I can. You can count on me. As soon as she got voted in, boom, she hit that door like her ass was on fire. Uh, I said, dude, this can't be good. If she's leaving that quick without saying anything to anybody, like she didn't acknowledge anyone. She got that vote and got the fuck up out of there. It was uh, Hannibal is Hungry is his channel. That's where uh, that footage came from. I was watching that last night and he streamed those last two meetings. Uh, this other footage came from uh, the late night crew. He was actually in the room in Dalton live streaming for sure. So shout out to that young man. Make sure y'all follow them on YouTube. Hannibal is Hungry and the Late Night Crew. Yeah, it's Beetlejuice. I think that she's going to bury this shit like it ain't nothing. And one thing I forgot to mention, if you didn't hear her saying that on the announcement, that she's going to get $400 an hour to do this. And people were in the chat were saying, hey, that's about the running rate for an attorney, I guess. they People were saying that she's a good attorney. I don't know. I've never seen her uh, try any legal cases. They said she was a prosecutor before. I say her track record on what she did in Chicago and even not being open with the press when they criticized her leaves a bad taste in my mouth and says, hell no, y'all doing, y'all going to have a bad decision going on here.
All right, so let's watch uh, Lori Lightfoot. Giving me strong words of encouragement. I can tell from this turnout, there's going to be close to 200 people here, um, that people in this village want something different, want to go in a different direction. <laughs> and I want to assure you that it's for you that I am here. And I will do my utmost um, if this motion. Uh, is passed to make sure that I... Dude, when she's saying, when she's giving this speech beforehand, I'm like, oh, no. No, no, don't tell me. She's she's making it seem like they are going to appoint her to be like the interim mayor for the time being. And I'm like, no, 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 no. And then I'm finding out as they're going on talking that they want her to head up the special investigation. And I'm like, oh, fuck no. Not as bad as trying to be the mayor, but still. I'll serve you with integrity. I'll serve you with integrity. I go, oh, hell no. Please, God. Um, if this motion uh, is passed, to make sure that I serve you with integrity. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge and thank um, the trustees who are here. Um, and thank you for um, your confidence in me to conduct a thorough and timely and independent investigation into the matters outlined in the motion regarding uh, Mayor Tiffany Henry and her administration. <laughs> As someone who's made good governance, the cornerstone of my public service career, mm. I recognize mm. maintaining the trust of those you serve and making decisions in their best interest is absolutely essential. Really? The residents of Dalton deserve nothing less than a government that is fully accountable, responsive, transparent, and effective stewards of your precious tax dollars. Yeah. As a lawyer and former federal prosecutor, and Mayor, I bring expertise in leading investigations of this kind and understand the complex challenges of government. I will commit to you that I will follow the facts where they lead without bias and reserve comments um, from this night forward until the work is complete. So she's going to reserve comments from this night forward until the work is complete. This case is going to be buried. I'm fucking telling you now. What special tools that does she possess that the FBI doesn't already have in, in their toolbox where they're already on this case? What makes sense to this? Uh, 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 what makes sense about this to you guys? You tell me. The conclusion of this investigation, I will provide an assessment of the findings and the recommendations. And I welcome and urge the full cooperation by Mayor Henyard, her staff, all village trustees, vendors, and others who have information relevant to this inquiry. Thank you very much. See how everybody is so excited about it, and they believe what she's saying. She's saying she's going to be able to do it. I don't know what skills that she uh, possesses that's going to make anything move faster. Latina says they're showing us how easy it is to be corrupt in our government and they're begging for it. They want to fight. They, they're asking for it for sure. It's crazy as hell. Crazy as hell. Let's play one more video and then we're going to jump over to Rumble. Man, thank you guys so much for being here. I definitely appreciate y'all. Shout out to my Rebels. Make sure you jump over to the Rumble channel. The link is in the pinned comment. Or you can go down to the description of this video. You'll find the link there. Or go over to rebelwithoutareason.com. You'll find a link to the live rumble stream over there thank you guys for being here i appreciate y'all rebels
I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you. Thank you guys so much. I'll be back on Thursday at the same time. If family outings allow. Shout out to the moderators, Anthony McQuaid, Atomic Tabasco, Cat F, Zeta Weech's Cane Sword, Latina and Kylie, My Man 50 Grand, S.E. Wolverines, and the beautiful Miss Sonya Scrapbook, the co-host with the most. Hanging out, waiting for y'all over on Rumble. Best damn co-host on the internets. Sonya Scrapbook. Make sure you subscribe to all of their channels too. They all got great content. Uh, we'll play one more and then we'll uh, jump over to the Rumble channel. So here's Joe Biden. He pandered to all the black folks. Now here he is pandering, pandering to the Italian folks uh, eating freshly delivered pizza. It's all about family. It's a tradition in our family. We welcome family <laughs> yeah. every Friday. And we always say what we're grateful for before we start eating. Um, so I would like to start and say that I am so incredibly honored and grateful to have you at our table and to be able to share this meal and for all of our family. My dad used to have an expression, her dad practiced it well. Family's the beginning, the middle, and the end, he'd say. Retarded as hell. Shout out to Dom Luker for that uh, clip. Breaking the Narrator News Network. He's uh, got his own network going there. Thank you guys for being here. I definitely appreciate y'all so very much. Jump over to the Rumble channel. We're going right now. Peace out, YouTube. Let's get ready.